Hey everyone, this is Cody. And Sean. This is a place to hear about the paranormal, the supernatural, and everything in between. Guess what today is? It's Friday. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? It's the new reality here. Sean and I just being a little uh, retarded today. It happens. <laughs> it freaking happens. Man, what a good week, huh, Sean? Oh yeah, it's been. It's you know what's good about this week? What's that? Today's Friday. Absolutely. <laughs> and tomorrow we're doing an investigation with the uh, one of our our old. Um, groups, right? Yeah, Para. I'm excited. I'm excited because, like, I it's it's been a pleasure working with them Absolutely. in the past, right? I mean, they we that's where we started. Um, we kind of lost contact with them for a little bit, got contact with them again, and they're like, "Hey, we're coming up to your neck of the woods, and we got a we got an investigation. We want you guys to tag along." Yeah, so there's gonna be a little bit, of, you know, scratching of our backs and scratching of their backs, and we're actually gonna earn an opportunity to also investigate the place, just the new reality. So. Again, this is uh, feeding into more exciting stuff for the new reality. Um, hope you guys uh, will follow us on that. We'll definitely have, uh, we'll keep you updated on what happens in that location for sure. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know too much about it. All I know is it is a abandoned strip mall, um, and it is supposed to be crazy haunted. In fact, um, the owner of Para was telling me that Ghost Adventures have been trying to investigate it for a while now, and they actually declined them. Fantastic. Well, you know why? Because they were waiting on the new reality. That's right. <laughs> and Para, of course. <laughs> so, hey, um, Sean, why don't you bring us in? Um, what, are, what are we going to talk about today? Um, I think we'll talk about, well, you, you, you stumped me there. Um, <laughs> we want to talk about, you know, we, we brought up in the past uh, podcasts, um, just uh, UFO activity. Right. Um, you know, we've talked about Cody and I having multiple... Uh, uh, situations and and just recently uh, Cody had a really cool situation happen and um, I, I kind of brought it I thought recently of a, something that happened to me in the past but why don't you uh, share yeah your... so um, this is actually pretty bizarre so I work in a it's basically I work in a town in the Mojave Desert and if any it's of... in the middle of Buffalo Egypt <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> nowhere <laughs> um, basically if if anybody follows any UFO stuff, they'll know about the Mojave incident. That was actually based like 50 miles from where I work. Um, so there's a lot of UFO activity there. There's a lot of strange things that happens, and it's the desert, so there's a lot of strange things that happens anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they probably it's probably meth induced, but... right? <laughs> so uh, so I'm at work, right? And we're we're doing it, and you know, some of you may know I'm a, I'm a police officer, and we're doing a pretty serious investigation. And I mean serious, like we're, you know, we're hunting somebody, there was some shots fired, and I won't go into details, but, so we're looking for somebody, and I'm in the middle of the scene, and it's, it's kind of nerve-wracking, because I'm in the middle of the street, you know, and I'm just an open target. Holy crap, right? Yeah, right? So I'm, I'm kind of, ner- you know, I'm nervous a little bit, and, you know, I'm going through the motions, going through my training, and I look up, something told me to look up, which is completely against anything what I've trained on. I look up in the sky, and there's two bright lights it's like just appeared out of nowhere and shot down like towards the ground and i was like what the hell was that and and in my mind i'm like oh that's that's a uh that's a shooting star and i'm all no no this was two of them right above the other one and they both went down the same time and then disappeared and for you to look away from the situation is against all of your training right like you don't just go look up when you got you know <laughs> things going on around you, you got exactly on, right right <clears throat> so yeah that that alone is just yeah when you told me that i was like draw dropping because i i definitely felt like there was a lot going on there i like, agree no i were watching out for you yeah right? no i think it was a protection thing for sure yeah um you know i i do think i have some guides that are ets or extraterrestrials so I, you know, I 100% think that was them looking out for me. Well, you know, we talked about uh, interdimensional things and, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, we had some technical de- difficulties, you know, again, when we're talking and we're dealing with paranormal and dealing with energy, it tends to mess with our equipment. But, you know, Cody, what did you think that was? I mean, was it, you know, was it, you know, cause we say angels and we say guides and what, what did you feel that so was? There's a lot of different terminology for things, you know, 
Angels, it's labels, uh, an, yeah, it's labels. Um, angels are essentially they are extraterrestrial, right? I mean, if d- depending on who you Perception, ask, yeah, you know. Right. So um, I don't necessarily think it was angels. I do think it was extraterrestrial. Um, and why do you why do you think that? So uh, you know, bring going back to our trip that we had in uh, East Eddie Ranch. Um, you know, there's tons of UFO activity there. So just let me interrupt you. Cody hasn't talked to me about this right now, so I'm really just kind of prying it out of him. So <laughs> I get to hear this first as well. Right. <laughs> so, um, well, yeah, so we were at East City Ranch, and, you know, they're known for their UFO activity there. And there was a point where I didn't feel good, right? So I went to go by myself. Do you remember that? Yes, I yeah, do, actually. So, I was worried for you, actually. Right. So I went, you know, I went to the tent. I was, you know, kind of doing a little meditation, just kind of being by myself. And I think that's when the ETs came in. What did I tell you when I first got there, when we got there? Find a moment to be by yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't find a moment until they made, they made a moment, you, yeah. <laughs> for sure. So, yeah, I became sick or, you know, whatever the, whatever the issue was. And um, I think that's when they came in. Wow. You know, the, I don't, I'm not sure what type yet. I do want to sit with it more and kind of, you know, do a meditation on it and kind of figure out what exactly it is. But they are for sure there. You know what I like about this is, is, is Cody and I always kind of have a discussion on how we're going to start a podcast. And then... It never goes to plan, which is great because we know that it's being guided. But, you know, let's talk about East City Ranch because, you know, we, we mentioned that in, in past uh, podcasts. I've been there, you know, a long time ago and we went together. Um, you know, one of your situations was that, right? Um, you know, we saw, I, I kind of want to say when Cody left, um, I found myself because uh, several people there knew I was a medium. Um, as well as a sensitive or whatever you want to call me. Again, it's all labels, but I'm open, right? I'm open to receive information. Well, we went into what they call the vortex out there. And and I sat with some people I didn't know um, and this lady I barely knew. And they said, hey, you know, can you come out here? Do you want to do a reading while we're in this vortex? Well, I found myself going into a trance and I didn't tell you about this. I told you briefly about it. Right, right. But all of a sudden I found myself... um, like just things were coming through me and and I felt like it was a collective, like it was a bunch of, and the, the message to the three people that were there, um, it was very evident that it was specifically to these individuals that were there. Um, I was mind blown because it was like, I was, uh, I was observing the whole situation, but when I first got there, like the first time several years ago, and this time again, it was a similar, like, Something used me as a vessel, but at the same time, I I opened up to more when I was there. It was really just mind blowing. Um, and after I walked away from it, I was like, "What the heck was that? Like, holy crap!" Right. And it was different than because I've done channeling, I've done different readings, and this was totally different than anything I'd ever felt. Um, again, we talked about that land being um, something about the land. There's something about it. There is. It's it's a. I don't know if it's because of where it sits or if it's freaking Mount Adams or, you know, what it is, but there is something different about that land. Yeah, there's a lot of intention there as well, but I think that it's already sacred. I think there's a lot of native, um, here we go with elementals, there's a lot of uh, inter and outer dimensional, um, right there, there's a veil there. There is. There's a lot of opportunity to reach across that veil and, and contact different entities may it be extraterrestrial again we're just labels but um what's funny is you mentioned you know different entities because they are huge on bigfoot over there and sasquatch there's signs all over the place watch out for sasquatch it's funny just a real quick little quirky story there was a you remember that female there and she came over to talk to us and she's all yeah i just bought some bigfoot food and i look at you and i'm all you know you just go to walmart pick up some bigfoot food or what (laughs) got some freaking crackers for bigfoot like what what are are you trying to get here (laughs) it was kind of it was she you know, she'd had a couple experiences there as well. And, you know, again, everybody takes those experiences differently. Um, again, Cody and I are more of the scientific type, so we're, we're going to go and analyze and, and, and actually try to connect. And, and yeah, I really want to want to harp on that fact, too. Sean and I do go into everything we go into uh, with a scientific approach. Like, we right. really want to disprove what's going on before we go in and and prove it. You know, I know what we're talking about. A lot of people are like, oh, these guys are out of their goddamn yeah. minds, <laughs> which is probably the truth. <laughs> but, you know, we, it, it's because we've seen so much, you know, throughout just uh, just you and I hanging out right. together. You know what I mean? We've seen so much to to discredit anything, really. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know? it, just, it, it just, the beauty of it is it just opens up the doors to 
to whatever it may be. And, and then with that opening, we get to experience so much. You know, going back to your your situation, um, pure guidance, pure protection, you know, um, and you, knowing that, right? You're, you, you know that it's not normal for you to look up right. and, and to look at something when you're in a dangerous situation. And just knowing that you're supposed to look up to know that something's there that's keeping its eye out for you. Absolutely. And, and, and an understanding that, you know, multidimensional protection is also might be a part it, of your lineage yeah you know, it, or, or your protection you know it, you've got your guides maybe that's a part of your guide it's 100 percent. it's a 100 percent knowing that they're there mm-hmm. you know and it's and it, like i said just being in that place in barstow you know it's it's crazy right. out there, you know. I'm a little envious sometimes when he sh- goes, "Oh my God!" Today I saw, you know, because he sees shit all the freaking time. <laughs> you know, he sees the 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 UFO and extraterrestrial shit way more than I do. Um, I've had situations even all growing up and dreams, and you know, I could bring up the situation I had forgot about for quite a while. It was it was before I was into into this as deep as I am, um, you know, this paranormal and metaphysical and all these different things that I'm into. But, you know, I'm, I was uh, sent out to San Diego for work to uh, assist in a project that was down in one of our sister uh, branches. Um, as I was going down, again, you know, we've talked about being in Southern California in the high desert area. Um, I, re, I was driving on one of the major freeways in the high desert. And I look up at the mountain and I see this cluster of lights. Um, at the time, wasn't my home, but it was around where my present home is, um, on the north side of the mountain. I saw this cluster of lights. It, you know, it looked like it. You know, it was probably thirty miles away, forty miles away. Um, and here I am. You know, I'm driving. I kind of look at it. I'm going, "What the heck is that?" You know, and and then I look at the road, obviously, because I don't want to wreck. You know, I'm driving, and all of a sudden, I look up again, and this cluster of lights is now like maybe two thousand feet away from the freeway, up up high, and I'm going, "What the fuck is that?" And I'm going, I'm trying to look at it and, and not try to wreck. I look back at the street to make sure I'm not going to slam in the back of somebody, and all of a sudden, I look back up. It's back by the mountain again. Wow, and I'm like, you know, here I am. I'm, you know, again, I'm not in the meta- metaphysical, so I'm, I'm 3D minded. I'm going. There's got to be a way to figure this out. Well, as I'm going down this mountainside, you know, I'm I'm passing the the north side of the mountain, and I'm getting into more of the mid of the mountain, and I look back that area, and I see the cluster of lights sitting in a canyon, if you will, between two major peaks of this mountain. And I'm going, this is crazy. Like, you know, I, you know, coming up from the mountain or up on the mountain and coming down, it happened a couple times is where it came in and it and that's, came close. That's pretty prominent, right? For yeah, it, to, it was For clear. it to come and then go and then come back. It and... happened twice. Like, it went and it came back. It went and it came back. And then it went again. And then that, by that time, I was going down the mountain. And when I was going down the mountain, I look and then I saw it in between the two mountain um, tops. Wow. Just sitting there. And again... I say it seemed like it was more than just one. It was several. I don't know if it was just they were together and they just they can disperse at one point. But what kind of blew my mind is my mom told me a story when we were young, when she lived in Salt Lake City, that she she went out on the porch one day and saw a bunch of lights, and she said they would spatter across, go every kinds of different directions, come and then come come together. Right. When I saw that, that was the first thing I thought. So, you know, just brings up more questions, right? What does that mean? Is that, was I supposed to see that? Was that a part of what my mom saw? Well, when you ask that question, it's it's actually 444 on the time right now. So <laughs> <laughs> so maybe maybe it is. So. <laughs> right. You know, Sean and I are really big on synchronicities, and we do see those numbers a lot. All of the time. So numerology is definitely plays, a, I think, a key to everything we deal with, right? right. Rather paranormal or supernatural or... Everything in between. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I do want to harp on this question because I do want. I don't think we've actually ever talked about this. What do you think, or, or what do you feel when you hear the term alien abduction? Wow, how do I feel? You know, I think it's real. I think, um, I think there's different kinds. 
I think there's different entities. So I think, again, there's a lot of studying I, um, from different, because um, again, I don't think, just like we have our different nationalities in human uh, humankind, uh, I think, you know, you have the same thing in different um, beings. Uh, may they be from different planets or different sections of a planet. Um, they're going to look a little different. You're going to deal with good and bad. Um, you know, we could, I don't want to talk about too much of the government because I don't want to get our podcast knocked off. But, um, you know, other planets, these beings are looking to maybe not have the best intention. Um, they want to understand because maybe they're trying to help with their civil civilization. So do you think they pick and choose their targets? Or because it seems that the people who are less into the aliens or less into the, the, the weird shit, right? are the ones who actually get picked up. Well, I think that's not by chance. Right. I think that it, it, it's embedded in them to not believe, so it's easier to do. Makes sense. Um, I think if you're open and you believe that this stuff can happen, and again, I think, you know, just like uh, different people's perceptions, I think I still think that when they're, you know, when it comes to why something, why an entity is doing what it's doing, are, are for different reasons and why they do it. Are they doing it for the right reasons? Are they doing it, I'm studying because it's going to help our civilization, we can do it in a better way, or is it like, I'm taking your ass and I'm going to probe your ass? Hey, whoa, <laughs> you know, whoa, you know what I mean? whoa. And, and I'm going to find out without you, without your okay. Right. And, but at the same time, now where you, were you already an exper experiment and they're coming out back and taking a look at you? You yeah. know, again, there's so many avenues and so many different things that could be happening. There's also, you know, there's crazy bunch of theories about it too. Right. I mean, I don't know if you guys, if you guys have Netflix or whatever, but on Netflix right now, there's a documentary. Um, it's Bob Lazar. Um, you know, 20 years ago, he was that crazy person who was alien abducted or had a bunch of aliens and stuff like that. It's a great, great documentary. Yeah. You, you, I highly recommend watching it. Um, I guess he was like sworn to secrecy for 20 years and then finally he's all, you know what? Screw it. Yeah. We're going to, was, gonna... was he the one that was with, uh, what's, I don't want to say his name cause it, you know, you know, he's got trademarks, but was with him on a podcast. And... Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it took yeah. him, it took him like, tw he, he's been trying to interview this dude for like 15 years and finally he's all, all right, we'll do it. And then, you know, the beautiful thing is, is, and again, going back to synchronicities right. is I decided I'd listen to his podcast for the first time. And that was the one I listened to. Right. And then somebody came to me and goes, Hey, did you listen to this guy? <laughs> the guy we're talking about, like, did you listen uh, to this, this podcast guy? And he was on it, dude, you got to listen to his story. You got to go to his documentary. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so apparently I'm supposed to listen to this documentary. Cause now you're bringing yeah. it up again. Well, so it, I'm going to figure it out. Cause I guess it's, I'm connected to it. Well, <laughs> if, if, it's yeah we'll, we'll talk about this after the podcast but let, let me tell you guys bob lazar is i 100 percent believe him everything that he went through and and dealt with and everything that he's going through to this day so uh, definitely check it out right. i know i kind of went on a tangent there but i think it's everything to do with what we're talking yeah, about you know? yeah absolutely um I'm, I'm excited about that again because it's happened that's come up three or four times now um so you know again I really live my life through synchronicities. Right. Um, when it presents itself, spirits let me know. It's again, it's another opportunity for growth, and I'm gonna pursue it. So Absolutely. it's exciting. So I so I want to want to do go back to alien abduction real quick. I do have another question for you. So do you think you know you said it can be different things, right? Um, depending on you know their their life or what what they're doing or what the ETs have in mind, right? Right. Do you think? it's contractual or can be contractual or do you think maybe they're abducting them because they have ties or their lineage is tied to that specific race? Um, I think, um, again, it's, it's both, right? It's some are contractual. Some are exactly what you just said. I think, um, I think there's a level of, of learning on every aspect. And I believe that you're seeing these things that, you know, going back to your abduction could be a physical abduction. Mental. Or it could be, you know, interdimensional. Like, you know, 
I told I talked about a dream, the dreams in the podcast. Yeah. Did that really happen, or was it just a dream? Right. Or is a dream an alter reality? Or are we or dreaming another, right now? Yeah. <laughs> you know, is it a dimensional thing? And I, I that actually happened with my friend, and we actually had that experience together, but different aspects of it. Um, I'll just keep asking questions because more questions, you know, you look for answers. Um, I believe, yeah, I think that contractually, you know, especially with, we're not seeing these things by chance. It's because we're gifted in a lot of ways. Not, I, I want to say gifted. I want to just say more that we're experienced. I prefer to do that because I think everybody has the abilities, but I, agree. I think that we've dealt with it more. Um, but I think that there's a level of the reason why we have the ability is to understand on multiple levels and multiple topics that are outside the 3D, you know, 3D minded thinking, you know, multidimensional. It's just, you know, I think it's. So have, I want to ask you, have you seen the fourth kind, the movie? I have not. Okay, so it's about uh, alien abductions in Alaska, right? This girl, she's a psychotherapist and she does hypnosis and she tries to. Uh, tries to get tries to figure out what happened to these people through hypnosis so do you think there's a tie through hypnosis and Absolutely. alien abductions no i think hypnosis is 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 going into the uh the unconscious mind it go, it gets into the deep it gets into it it makes ego step aside and brings out the things that are deep inside that are subconscious right so i think that that helps bring up things that are really have happened you know i, I can go on on a tangent about you know, I have a ET guide. You know, he looks human, but he's not. You know, he's got a lot of character, character, character characteristics, characteristics. <laughs> that, that look like human, but there's things that are about him that are not. You know, I always picture things on the forehead, and that's the third eye opening, and that's a lot of how I see things outside of the 3D world. But this person has like an embedded thing on his forehead. Wow. And he's, you know, he's got the gray hair and it's ponytailed and he looks like a type of warrior. But, Very tall being, right? Right, right. right. And um, when I first started doing meditations, I would come out of a meditation and I would start drawing and I would come up with, they were blonde haired, blue eyed beings with a, something on their forehead, uh, sign showing that they, they saw, you know, also with the third eye and, and seeing uh, metaphysically. But yeah, so yeah, I think it's going back to your question. Um, I think there, there is a lineage, a level of it. I think in some situations, I think people were created by, and they're only being studied because they were created, and they're advancing. That you know, I don't want to say all of humankind is because of you know extraterrestrial um, intervention, if you will. No. But, but I do I think, think there they is do. some. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, the if you look at the technology or tech, I can't even speak right now. Words are hard. Yeah. <laughs> technology, right? It, it's grown exponentially in in the last right. what twenty years, right? And just out of the blue, yeah. right? I mean, that's computers and um, meta, that's also humankind, right? Like our evolution as humans. Well, our, our uh, the sign the not science, but our health, like right? There's there's so many things keeping us alive now. Right. You know, so there's a lot. I, I, am I going to say that's UFO or that's ET, you know, intervention? It could be, could be. you know. Um, I'm open. Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, thinking, you know, I, I can, both you and I do it all the time. We communicate without saying. Right. And I, I believe extraterrestrials do that. That's normal for them. I think but, so, too. But I think that's why you, we have dreams and we have visions and we see. Deja vu. Yeah. Yep. So I think we do communicate. I, I you know. You know, I'm a dreamer, but I think the You're dreams dreamer, are... Huh? You're a dreamer, huh? I think, <laughs> I, a dreamer. Hey, I think that's a song. <laughs> I'm a dreamer. No, I don't want to, you know, I don't want you guys not to listen to our coffee. I guess I'll stop singing. But, you know, I think, um, yeah, there's a lot that, that we don't understand, but we're trying to understand. Um, yeah, I think as we keep going on, we're going to learn more and more. You know, it's exciting is, you know, we're seeing all these things on YouTubes and TV about UFOs and that are finally our government quote unquote is going to tell us that, you know, these things have been happening. Well, yeah, we knew that, you know, you, you can't tell us anymore that it's not happening, but at the same time, everybody let's, you know, going back to what you were talking about, we're dealing with extraterrestrial. They're 
not all bad. They're not all good. Right. It's just like our, our human nature, like our humankind. We're good. We're bad. Well, it's, it goes back to that fear base, right. right? Well, that's our government wanting us to be – now. okay, now we're – you know, these – now that we know about them, they're going to come and take take our planet. No, they're not. They would have done that a long time ago. Right. I think in a lot of ways there's – we're being protected by elements we don't understand yet. I think we're dipping into that to keep us away from the, the ugly – um, uh, extraterrestrials that could just take, wipe us out. Right. But I believe that we are being taken care of by divine. And divine is not going to allow anything that we're not, so, you know, it's, it's not going to allow bad things to happen. To that's us. not supposed to happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they're intervening, their intervention, angels, you know, call them angels, call them extraterrestrial, you know, they're here to protect us, you know, and I think that, that this planet is. It's 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 young. We're 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 toddlers. We're the two three year old kid in the in in our uh, in our universe that is just learning to start to crawl and walk, and we're being observed to watch us as we began to walk. Right. Um, and I think the tech the technology we have is definitely um, outside of this planet. I agree. Yeah. yeah, well, especially with what you work with. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> and, and the stuff I dealt with, I kind of saw dabbles, not with the present company. Well, I guess with the present company I'm with and what I worked with before, you know, you could see little hints of technology that just popped into aerospace. Mm. Um, out of nowhere. Yeah, out of nowhere. <laughs> but then it's funny because, you know, I, I went to this class. I, I'm going to share this because it was fun. But, um, you know, I was taking FAA classes just because I wanted to be better at my job than I, I you know, was present. And, and, you know, in the line of work that I'm doing, you know, talking about dealing with composites and, air, you know, lighter materials and things that we build our aircraft with, you know, this FAA guy goes, you know, your company's thinking outside of the box. So, you know, when he was talking about that, and of course, at this time, I wasn't, you know, aware of my intuitiveness, but I said to him, um, you know, thinking outside the box, are you talking about UFOs? And his eyes, he, he stopped in mid-sentence and looked over at me. He goes, why did you ask me that? <laughs> and I said, well, that's thinking outside of the box, isn't it? Well, he, he, he again, this, this gentleman's probably uh, 73, 72 years old, been in the FAA forever. Well, he looks at me and goes, well, that's funny that you say that because I presently am the head of a group that, they they actually investigate possible UFO crash sightings. That's amazing. Um, and I'm like going, what the fuck is going on? Right. You know, I'm going, really? Like something tells me to say UFO, and all of a sudden this gentleman's going, why well, investigate crash sightings? <laughs> so this gentleman says, you know, I'll, I'll bring this in, and he goes, what do you think? All this, you know, Teflon, computer chips, composites, um, composites um, uh, what's the fiber, not, uh, uh, fiber optics, fiber optics yeah. um, you know, all these different things that just all of a sudden shows up. He goes, he was, he was involved with the crash site of Area 51. Wow. He told me that. He told the class, class that. And we're like, holy crap. And I, I just... At that point, I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, so where what I'm supposed to be hearing. Again, it was before I was in the metaphysical. So he, he brings in the following week, he brings in this video of them. And it had to been in the area where we're at because I, I recognize the, the, just the landscape. Right. It's, you know, it's 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 yucca. It's old rock, lava rock and it's dirt. You know, right. that's that's what you're dealing with. Well, then we wa he walks up in this video where it looks like, River rock, but huge river rock, right? Mm -hmm. Big, round, circular river rock. And we're looking at it going, seems out of place. Well, as he's investigating, he's got six people on his team. And they're all, they've got all this high, high uh, evolved equipment. And, and he's che che checking the area for radiation. And, and they go over to this round, big, huge cylinder thing and hits it. And it makes a metal noise. It's called <laughs> boom. He goes, I think this is a rocket booster. And I'm going, and, and at this point, my mind's blowing. And then he goes into this other area where he thought it was a cockpit, and it was a diamond shape, and it had like a, it was shaped symmetrically. The diamonds had, you know, evenly spaced holes all the way around. He put his compass in it. It was going in circles. That is insane. And I'm going, holy crap! Like, 
you know, it's funny. I just forgot all about that, and it just came up. But I knew, again, like, it's not by chance I'm in aerospace. When I was young, I was looking at pictures that were of UFOs. You know, I, I was making airplanes when I was young, and here I am in the aerospace industry, right. and I'm still interested in UFOs. That's because I hate to tell you, but you're an alien, bro. <laughs> I'm not green yet, but... <laughs> But no, it, it's been an amazing ride, and and again, synchronicities. You said it; they're going to continue to happen to the right people, right. to the people that are searching, that are you know led to search. And I think we're led to search. And, and pay attention to that, guys. You know, everybody who's listening, pay attention to the synchronicities because nine times out of ten, somebody's trying to talk to you or somebody's trying to tell you, yeah. "Hey, pay attention to this." Yeah. You know, sit with that, whether it be a time 11 11 or you know I, it's funny i say that because we see that all the time yeah, all but the time. if somebody you know or if it's a deja vu or somebody says something that you just researched it's probably you're meant to research or you're meant yeah. to do whatever it is you know you're yeah. doing it doesn't have to be et it could no. be just divine it could be angelic it could be you know god if you will you right. know again we all label things differently um but i think you know they're something's trying to talk to you Absolutely. So. Well, hey, guys, thanks for uh, tuning in. Make sure to give us a like and uh, follow. Make sure you tell all your friends that uh, we're the weirdos called the new reality. <laughs> and uh, we like talking about weird stuff. Hey, it's Friday. Let's enjoy it, everybody. Take it easy. Bye.